In today's session, we concentrate on kinds of quadrilaterals or types of quadrilaterals or we can call it as family of quadrilaterals. Now quadrilateral means is a simple closed figure with four sides or simply you can say that a polygon with four sides is called as quadrilateral. So once again I stress this point. A polygon with four sides is called as quadrilateral. Now based on the nature of the sides and angles these quadrilaterals are named as different differently that is this quadrilateral named as a kite, named as a trapezium, named as a parallelogram, named as a rectangle, named as a rhombus, named as a square. Now let me see the flow chart of this quadrilateral, then we will proceed each one separately. Now this is kinds of kinds of quadrilaterals. So, first one is a quadrilateral. In this quadrilateral family, in this quadrilateral family, we are having, based on the nature of the sides as well as angles, these are categorized as kite, trapezium, parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle, square. How it comes? Let me see it. The quadrilateral now named as a kite. How the kite will be? How the kite will be? One pair of adjacent sides are equal in the same way another pair of adjacent sides are equal. So they are equal. These two are equal. Quadrilateral means what? It is a polygon having four sides itself. A polygon having four sides. Next, let me come here. Under this quadrilateral, one side kite because these properties are entirely different. Next, we come. One pair of opposite sides are parallel. Then the quadrilateral is called as trapezium is called as trapezium that means one pair of opposite sides are parallel so these are parallel next under the trapezium again it is called as parallelogram so parallelogram means two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Next, under the parallelogram, again we are having, under the parallelogram, one is rectangle, another one is rhombus. Rectangle and another one is rhombus. Now from the rectangle and from the rhombus we can have a square. So this is brief structure of the family of quadrilaterals. When we go in depth still we are having the so many pictures. I am not ready here because for class 8 this is more than enough. Now let me see. In quadrilaterals, now we have segregated one side kite, another side trapezium. And again under the trapezium, we are having the parallelograms. Under the parallelogram, again we have rectangle and rhombus. Now again, rectangle and from the rectangle and rhombus, again we are having a square. So I hope this is clear to everybody. Now, when you come here, all quadrilaterals need not be kites. 
all quadrilaterals need not be trapeziums all quadrilaterals need not be parallelograms all quadrilaterals need not be rectangles all quadrilaterals need not be rhombus all quadrilaterals need not be square but when you come from down to up all are correct all squares are rectangles all squares are rhombus all squares are parallelograms all squares are trapeziums all squares are quadrilaterals all kinds are quadrilaterals i hope you are understanding next all rectangles are parallelograms all rectangles are trapezium all rectangles are quadrilaterals all rhombus are parallelogram all parallelograms are trapezium all parallelograms are quadrilaterals in the same way all trapeziums are quadrilaterals when you come from down to up all are true but when you come from top to bottom it need not be true i hope this you have understood how the picture of quadrilaterals will be so under the quadrilaterals now we have bifurcated kites one side trapeziums one side then when you go to the higher classes even this parallelogram is bifurcated separately that is kite trapeziums parallelogram separately it is bifurcated under the trapezium again we are having right trapezium isosceles trapezium again when you come to the parallelogram this as it is will come but we are not going that much depth for your a class this we have the short picture of type of types of quadrilaterals now let me come each one first let me start with a quadrilateral then we will see what is kite what is trapezium what is parallelogram and what are the properties of a parallelogram then we go for the next exercise after completion of the 3.3 then we will study about the rectangle rhombus square then we complete the last exercise so i have given the brief idea about the kinds of a quadrilateral next let me come each one separately first let me start with quadrilateral so that is quadrilateral you can define in terms of a polygon so first one is quadrilateral ye polygon ye polygon with four sides is called a quadrilateral is called a quadrilateral there is no other properties polygon means it is a simple closed figure that's all only simple closed figure having four sides then the figure is called as quadrilateral so how the pictures will be you can draw any way whichever you feel closed figure with the four sides you can draw in any way a closed figure with four sides that's all only now is someone may be having a doubt so can't we draw like this why can't this also can be drawn but this is a concave picture we are not dealing with the concave pictures now we are dealing only with convex pictures only next one is this quadrilateral is segregated as one side kite now what is kite let me say it kite is a quadrilateral is a quadrilateral a quadrilateral in which two pairs of two pairs of or you can say that two distinct consecutive pairs of sides or equal in which two distinct consecutive consecutive means side by side two distinct consecutive pairs of sides are equal is 
called is called a catch. This is the definition. Two distinct consecutive pairs of sides or equal in a quadrilateral, then that quadrilateral is called as kite. Now, how the picture will be? You can draw like this. So, here, these two, these two, this is one pair, it is another pair, two distinct pairs of consecutive sides. These two consecutive sides are equal, these two consecutive sides are equal. I hope it is clear. Or you can draw, or you can draw in this pattern also. Here, these two, this pair is, sides are equal, and these two consecutive two sides are equal. I hope it is clear to everybody. Now, what are the properties? This is a definition and is a picture. This is A, B, C, D. Or you can take it as A, B, C, D. What are the properties of kite? So, let me write the properties. So, that is the properties of kite are properties as per the definition two pairs of distinct consecutive sides are equal that is the definition I am not talking about the definition I am talking about the properties that is the first property is diagonals or first property is diagonals are perpendicular to each other diagonals are perpendicular to each other the second property is one of the diagonal one of the diagonal bisects bisects the other diagonal both are not bisecting one of the diagonal bisecting the other diagonal the third property is related to angles now see first we have seen about the sides consecutive sides in the definition so I said in the beginning of the class only depends upon the sides depends upon the angles quadrilateral or named with different Category that is here based on the sides it is named as a kite. Now in this, how the angles will be, how the diagonals will be. So sides we have seen in the definition. Next, diagonals we have seen how the diagonals will be. Now the last property that is how the angles will be. So the angles, angle B will be always equals to angle D that is measure of angle B M of angle B means measure of angle B is same as measure of angle B but but measure of angle E is need not be equal to measure of angle C I hope this is clear now the same thing you can write in different way also that is or the same thing angle A, B, C measure of angle B same thing I am writing as angle A, B, C is equals to angle A, B, C A, B, C when I am writing angle will be at the middle A, B, C is equals to angle A, B, C but angle B, A, D is not equal to B, A, D is not equal to angle B, C, D. I hope it is clear about the height. Next, let me come to the trapezium. So, in a trapezium, we have just a definition, no other properties. So, the second one is Trapezium. In a quadrilateral, a quadrilateral, 
in which one pair of opposites whereas in kind we have seen the consecutive sides now the concept is over consecutive sides now hereafter we will be seeing only opposite sides in which one pair of only one pair one pair of opposite sides one pair of opposite sides or parallel is called is called a trapezium is called a trapezium how it will be you see these two lines are parallel means when i complete a quadrilateral one pair of opposite sides are parallel to each other so if i write a b c d here a b is parallel to c d so one pair of opposite sides are parallel then such figures are called as such figures are called as trapeziums now in this again we are having the different names that is if one of the angle is if one of the angle is 90 degrees that is if it is like this so these two are parallel a b c d these two are parallel and angle is 90 degrees then this is called as right trapezium trapezium next it is right trapezium next one is next one is if non parallel sides are equal these two are parallel these two are parallel to each other and the non parallel sides are equal then it is called as isosceles trapezium so this is called as isosceles trapezium this is called as right trapezium so i hope this is clear about what do you mean by quadrilateral next what do you mean by kite and its properties next what do you mean by trapezium now only in the kites we will be having the consecutive sides then trapezium on boards we will be having one pair of opposite sides two pair of opposite sides only opposite sides will be needed next we will come to the parallelogram in a trapezium one pair of opposite sides in a quadrilateral if two pairs of opposite sides are parallel this is one pair this is another pair two pairs of opposite sides are parallel then the quadrilateral is called as parallelogram now let me see that the next one is parallelogram So here, AB is parallel to C. 
CB and AD is parallel to BC. Can we draw a parallelogram like this pattern only? Can't we draw like this? You can draw any way. But only thing you have to see that opposite pairs are parallel to each other. So I hope this is clear. Next. Let me come to what are the elements of a parallelogram. So elements means what are the opposite signs, what are the opposite angles, what are the adjacent angles, what are the adjacent signs. Now the elements. Elements of parallelogram. You can use the symbol parallelogram, parallelogram. Instead of writing parallelogram, you can use the symbol also. So, what are the elements of parallelogram? These are not the properties. These are the names how you can give. Now, first one. What are the opposite sides? First one. Opposite sides. What are opposite sides in this? AB and DC. These are the opposite sides, am I right? AB and DC. This is one pair. Come on. AD and BC. This is the other pair. These are opposite sides. Next. Second one. Opposite angles. Opposite angles. What are the opposite angles? Angle A and angle C. Angle A and angle C are opposite angles. And another pair is angle B and angle D. These are the opposite angles. Next, third one. Adjacent angles. Adjacent angles. What are the adjacent angles? That means side by side angles. What are the adjacent angles? Angle A and angle D. These two are adjacent angles or angle A and angle B. Angle A and angle B are adjacent angles. Angle B and angle C are adjacent angles. Angle C and angle D are adjacent angles. Angle D and angle A already I have written off. Now we know what are the opposite sides. We know what are the opposite angles. And we know what are the adjacent angles. So I hope it is clear to everybody. Next, diagonals. Already we know the definition of a diagonal. What is that? A line segment joining any two non-consecutive vertices. So here what will be the diagonals? The diagonals are one is AC, another one is BD. They are called as diagonals. So the last point is fourth point, diagonals. What are the diagonals? One is AC and another one is BD. These are the diagonals. These are the names in a parallelogram. That means they are the parts of a parallelogram. Now, let me come to the properties of a parallelogram. What are the properties you are having? Now, in this, the first property is in a parallelogram, Opposite sides are equal. Properties. First one. In a parallelogram, we are talking about the parallelogram only. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are opposite sides are equal. Second one. Opposite angles, opposite angles are equal. Opposite sides are also equal. Opposite angles are also equal. Next, the third one is adjacent angles are always supplementary. Adjacent, adjacent 
angles. We have written adjacent angles. So adjacent angles are supplementary means some of the adjacent angles will be always 180 degrees. So adjacent angles are supplementary. Supplementary means the meaning is sum is equals to 180 degrees. Next, the fourth property is diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals, diagonals bisect each other. So, these are the properties of a parallelogram. So, I hope it is clear because it is the beginning for you. You may feel difficult, but once you read, it will be so easier. So, once again, I repeat the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal, opposite angles are equal, adjacent angles always it will be supplementary, diagonals will be bisecting each other. So, one diagonal will divide into other diagonal into two or two equal parts. Next, when we recall, now this is about, about quadrilaterals in quadrilateral side, trapezium, parallelogram. Rest we have three, rectangle, rhombus, square, we will see in the next session, that means after completion of the exercise problems. Now, before I start exercise 3.3, I wanted to recall the properties of transversal from your lower classes. Now, let me recall the properties of a transversal because we have to make use of those while doing the problems. So, though it is not related to this, but the knowledge is required. So, I am recalling properties of a transversal. What do you mean by transversal? What do you mean by transversal? If a line intersects two or more lines at distinct points, then that line is called as transversal. That is this is from lower classes, it's not from your class. So first one, this is transversal. What do you mean by transversal? A line which intersects, a line which intersects two or more lines at distinct points at distinct points is called transversal. Now, how it is? This is L and this is M and it is N. L is a line intersecting two lines at distinct points, then L is called transversal. L is called transversal because it is intersecting two or more lines at distinct points. Now here, whenever transversal intersecting two or more lines, we should know the properties of this transversal. Now, for that, you should know what are the angles. Now, let me start. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, in this, what are the corresponding angles? What are the vertically opposite angles? What are the interior angles? What are the exterior angles? That and all we have to have the knowledge. Now, first let me see what are the corresponding angles. Corresponding angles. What are the corresponding angles? Means same position. For this line, for this, this is the position. And here, it is same position. Same position. Means angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles. That is angle 1 and angle 5. Angle 2 and angle 6, they are the corresponding angles. 
angle 3 and angle 7 or the corresponding angles. Next, angle 4 and angle 8 or the corresponding angles. Next, second one. Vertically, vertically opposite angles or you call it as VOA, vertically opposite angles. What are the vertically opposite angles? When two lines intersecting, the opposite angles are called as vertically opposite angles and always they will be equal to one another. That is here angle 1 and angle 3, angle 2 and angle 4, angle 5 and angle 7, angle 6 and angle 8 are called as vertically opposite angles. Next, come to third one. Alternate interior angles. What are the interior angles? So, 1, 2, 7, 8 are outside. So, they are called as the exterior angles. 3, 4, 5, 6 are inside these two lines. Therefore, these are called as interior angles. Now, in this, alternate. Not on the same side. Alternate. Alternate means 3 and 5 are called as alternate interior angles. 4 and 6 are called as alternate interior angles. Now, the next one is alternate interior angles. What are the alternate interior angles? Angle 3 and angle 5. Angle 4 and angle 6 or alternate interior angles. So, the same thing you can write as in short form alternate interior angles as AIA. Next, the last one is co-interior angles or interior angles on the same side of transversal. So, co-interior Co-interior angles. What are the co-interior angles? Means interior angles on the same side of transversal. Angle 3 and angle 6. Angle 3 and angle 6. Angle 3 and angle 6. Angle 4 and angle 5. These are nothing but the elements. These are not the properties. These are the elements we are naming. What are the co-interior angles? What are the corresponding angles? What are the vertically opposite angles? What are the alternate interior angles? These are all the elements we have seen. Now, let me see the properties. What are the properties? That is, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, here these two are any lines. Now, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, so properties, properties, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines whenever it is intersecting two parallel lines the first property is corresponding angles are equal corresponding angles are equal means what angle 1 will be equals to angle 5 we have seen what are the corresponding angles they will be equal so, the first property is corresponding angles are equal. Equal means what? Angle 1 is equal to angle 5. Angle 2 is equal to angle 6. Angle 3 is equal to angle 7. Angle 4 is equal to angle 8. I hope this is clear. So, Whenever transversal intersecting two parallel lines, the first property is corresponding angles are equal. Next, vertically opposite angles, 
whether they are intersecting parallel lines or whatever it may be, this is always true. Vertically opposite angles are always equal. It is not connected to. It is not connected to this transversal. If any two lines are intersecting, then vertically opposite angles are always true. That means angle one will be equal to angle three. Angle two is equal to angle four. Angle five is equal to angle seven. Angle six is equal to angle eight. Next, the second property is. Alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are equal. Alternate interior angles are equal. When they are equal, when these two lines are parallel, that time only. That is, angle three is equal to angle five, and angle four is equal to angle six. Then the last property is. Co-interior angles are supplementary. Co-interior angles are supplementary. Supplementary means what? Sum will be equal to 180 degrees. That is, angle three plus angle six is equal to angle three. Angle three plus angle six is equal to 180 degrees and Angle four plus angle five is equal to one hundred and eighty degrees. These are the three properties we are having. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, corresponding angles are equal. Alternate interior angles are equal. Co-interior angles are supplementary. So I hope we have recalled the properties of transversal from your lower classes. Now let me proceed to the exercise.